After, uh, after Dave's presentation, I don't know what to say because I think in terms of product development, he illustrated really well some of the things that you need to do when you think about developing products, which is that you have to use your imagination. You have to be, I don't know if it's perseverant or stubborn or both, but it's something like that. You keep trying and trying uh, new stuff all the time. Uh, you have to surround yourself with a lot of people who give you feedback and not people who, you know, flatter you the right way. People who tell you the truth, you know, who are not scared to say, well, this is, this is bad stuff. And, and, uh, and tell you uh, how to improve uh, the things that you put together. Uh, it, it strikes me too that, uh, uh, you know, I know Dave now, I've known Dave for, for several years, and, and how people like Dave or, or like Jonathan or like Tim or Jerry in, in Saskatchewan or even listening to, to Lionel. I, I didn't know Lionel until 10 minutes ago, but we, we have things in common, you know. We've always been curious and uh, and we've grown up with common experiences. Jonathan used to forage with his mom when he was three and four and five years old, and I have that in my story too, in my personal story. And uh, uh, it's carried us right through, independently of what we did uh, in the past. We, we never forgot those early years. And uh, they, they stuck with us and brought us where we are today in, in many ways. And uh, I mean, I did some commercial fishing and, and uh, I was a teacher for a while, economic development officer, but that foraging with mom, uh, it, it was there, it was a constant. So I was always curious about trying different things. In my case, well, I ended up in the food industry, so the, the, the sort of edible line. But uh, uh, Dave was talking about the boosters, and uh, when I was teaching in uh, Northwestern Ontario in 1969, um, for our field trips, this was a big uh, revenue earner. So I had my junior high kids out in the bush collecting moose shit. <laughs> and and uh, drilling it and uh, varnishing it. And we made earrings and brooches, brooches and uh, necklaces and uh, uh, beautiful stuff that really it was. And you know, you could hear things like, oh, well, my boyfriend really gave me shit. Because <laughs> he, he loves me. <laughs> so. So, I mean, the punchline is you're not alone. You're trying to get something off the ground here. And uh, it is hard to think about where to start, how to, how, how to get things going. Uh, but uh, there are people like Dave and Tim and Jerry and Jonathan and myself and Lionel right here, right next door to you, uh, who have, uh, they're practitioners. They're people who've done things and tried many things and made lots of mistakes uh, so you can learn from them. And these people are, are very uh, generous with their information. So tap into that and don't think that this is a, a sort of a, uh, an insurmountable task that you're, you've set for yourselves to, uh, to get this off the ground. Uh, there, there are lots of possibilities and uh, I think of, <laughs> I think of uh, some of the mistakes I made. I got this idea from eating. Uh, I was eating lamb with uh, mint jelly. And I hate mint jelly. I love mint, but I hate mint jelly. But it reminded me of something. You know, it felt resinous. So I said, maybe I could make a jelly with, uh, the, you know, the bush. So I started looking around the bush, and in fact, I found out that every conifer is, is edible. So I made, first of all, herbal teas with tamarack and white pine and red pine and jack pine and cedar and uh, all of these different uh, things. And I remember there was a journalist that had come to my place and she was asking, she was asking me about that thing. And she says, uh, do you ever make mistakes? And I said, yeah, you try a lot of things and you can make a lot of mistakes, you know. Well, she says, like, give me an example. Well, I said, look, I, I just finished uh, a whole bunch of trials here. So I had all these jellies from, from different different trees, and she tasted cedar. Wow, that's wonderful, really, really good. And I gave her another one that I commercialized, I just knew the two, just balsam fir and cedar. And she tasted the, the balsam fir, and she said, wow, that is really fantastic. I could, I could serve this with meat, I could serve this with fruit salads, I could, I could think of a lot of things I could do. And I said, well, try this one. <laughs> So uh, she put a spoonful and just pop, spit it on the cement floor. And she said, what is it? And I said, well, that's white pine. She said, what does it remind me of? There's something about it. 
She says, I know what it is, turpentine. And that's exactly what it tastes like. So <laughs> you have to try things, you know, and, and, and accept that you're going to make mistakes. And, uh, and, and that's all right. That's all part of the learning process. In the meantime, maybe you're, you're uh, also working on texture and color and, uh, uh, and learning. It, it's, it's a learning curve. So you've got to try things. The only thing I'd say is you want to watch out that you don't spread yourself out too much. If I were to get into some of the stuff that, that Dave was doing in terms of, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he, he got into the food stuff, the herbal teas, he got into the, 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 uh, the artifacts and, and the artisanal stuff. And uh, uh, I, was, I was like that at the beginning and I thought it was just too much after a while. I said, if I have a good idea, <coughs> am I going to know that it's a good idea? Uh, there were just two <coughs> different types of products. I said, let's go back a little bit. Think about what you think you know best and where you think you might be able to make a difference. Just like Ryan always said, uh, you know, come out with some really original products that may not be known but will be accepted by the general public uh, by and by. And so I decided to go into the food sector. But you know, I haven't given up the booster stuff yet. I, mean, it's, uh, I know we couldn't get it in classrooms today, you know. Booster wouldn't go in a classroom today, but in the 60s it, it was okay. So I think I think there are four main ways that I that I develop new products. And the first one is what I've just been talking about. Using your imagination and, and just trying things out and trying things out and getting people around you to comment and they'll give you ideas too. And uh, uh, it yeah. You know, I, I think of, of, of my daughters, you know, my daughter is, uh, uh, she's 28 years old and she has uh, really, really curly hair and we were doing a presentation together and I said, you know, one of the ones that really tasted a lot of the stuff when she was growing up is her, you know, in fact, you look at her hair, but when she was young, it was straight, you know, but she answered just like that, she said, dad, when he was younger, had hair. <laughs> so. One, one way that is, has been quite successful for me is one that I call cloning. And cloning to me is using something that exists and trying to find an equivalent perhaps in the, on the wild side. And I'll give you some examples of that. I do cattail hearts. Cattail, everybody knows them, they grow in the marshes and so on. And the center at the base of the plant is um, a little bit cucumber-like, uh, it's delicious, you know, it's crunchy, it's, uh, it's got beautiful texture, it's got a nice taste, mild, but very nice. And uh, I, you know, I've been eating those all my life since I was a teenager. And uh, every time I was in the bush fishing or something like that, I'd chop some up and have some with my lunch, you know. And one day I'm looking at hearts of palm in a can. And I turn it around and look at the ingredients, and uh, it's citric acid and water, a bit of salt, and that's it. And so I start to think about a Canadian hearts of palm, you know. And uh, so I get, I go to the drugstore, get some citric acid, do the recipe right off. It, it was a, a winner. The only thing I didn't like about that was citric acid, it's a chemical thing, uh, and the, the work really started there. So I'm looking for a natural citric acid. And I ended up calling uh, labs in the States, Germany, France, and finally, it's somebody in Germany who referred me to a company in the States. And this was the, the breakthrough. This is months of telephone calls and trying to find this natural citric acid. So they said, There's a, there, there are people in France doing this, and it's a natural citric acid that's extracted from lemons. So they take out the lemon taste, and they just have this acid. So I called this place in France, and they said, well, really interesting. We just opened up. Um, a, a plant in Quebec, and it was in fact 40 miles south of me. And so, uh, there it was, natural citric acid. I changed the salt, put in some sea salt, and this has been one of my greatest products. It was a, a, well, one of four. I started off with four products, and uh, it, it's been a winner all along. This is our Canadian parts of Paul, so to speak. You know. So. Uh, Another one that was really neat uh, is uh, the Oxide Daisy Flower Buds, and that's a big seller. I have problems with it enough. It's so successful. And this is a wild meal that I'm doing at home. I have eight guests, and uh, so I've got wild meats, I've got 